What's going on guys? It's Omniarch and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be talking about runes, titles and kingdom buffs in Rise of Kingdoms. So if you're new to the game, this video is for you and the reason that I kind of lumped together runes, titles and kingdom buffs all into one video is because essentially a lot of their in their effects kind of overlap, right? A lot of them overlap. They do similar things, but they also stack on top of each other. So for a lot of the things that you want to use a rune for, it would also be super beneficial to have a title for as well. And, and if you can get a kingdom buff on top of that, then that's even better. And so I think it's really interesting to talk about all them together because a lot of times when I'm asking for a title I'm also looking for a rune that does the same thing and I'm also hoping that we have a kingdom buff that does the same thing um, because again the more that they stack the better the benefit is that you get now the first thing I want to talk about is runes because they are the most abundant and they are the easiest to get and if you actually look at the top of my screen here you'll see all of these little boxes these are all of the buffs that are currently being applied to your city right so if you click on any of these it'll tell you what it is so you'll see I have a bunch of different production and gathering buffs right here but if you scroll down this golden one here is called rune of furnace 5 um, and it is a 20% gold production increase and then to the right it'll tell you how how much longer you'll have that buff for so runes are really interesting because they spawn in at holy sites only after you kill their respective guardians so if you look in the top right corner this is the mini map and you can see i'm at the very center of the map and at the center of every single map there is a uh, lost temple now, if you kind of scroll around the map, you'll see a bunch of other little icons. So these icons here are called passes. These um, towers here are actually um, Alliance fortresses, which is interesting. But if you go into zone two, um, you'll see more of these like kind of giant like gem looking things. So there's one. Um, here's another one if we zoom in. And all of these logos indicate some sort of holy site right whether it's a shrine or a sanctuary or something like that um these holy sites are where you can find runes now if you go to your holy site right now you may not see them and the reason for that is because like i said before runes actually only show up after you kill the respective guardian that is holding that rune so let me zoom out and go to a holy site that maybe still has some guardians maybe um, if they weren't killed earlier today they'll still have them so here's a great example this is typically what a holy site will look like even at the lost temple in the center of the map um, there are guardians these guardians spawn in every single day twice a day once at reset so that's zero 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 utc and again i believe at 1200 utc if i'm not mis uh, mistaken so every 12 hours there will be a new set of guardians that you can kill and when you kill the guardians you'll see the potential rewards it'll tell you what could what rune could possibly come from this guardian dying there is also a chance of getting a blueprint um if if that does drop of course that's a cool thing but um runes are primarily what you're gonna be getting from killing these guardians now the 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 closer to the center of the map you are the stronger the guardian but the more powerful the rune right and these runes are random um, every time you kill the guardian it'll drop pretty much a different rune now there is a set of runes right it's not like it's not like you know one day it'll drop a 1% research buff and then the next day it'll drop a 35% reset research buff um, typically what it is it'll normally go I believe it's 5% 7% 10% and 15% if I'm not mistaken um, and so they'll I'll try to link to uh, maybe there's a website that lists all of the different runes that could possibly drop if there is I'll, I'll link that in the description below that's how you go about getting runes right so uh, upon reset you kill the guardians they give you a ton of experience and they'll drop some random rune that is possible right and so the reason that I'm at the center of the map is because the lost temple is the most powerful of the holy sites and therefore has the strongest guardians who drop the best runes runes come in a couple different colors I believe it's like gray green purple and gold or something like that or I think maybe there's a blue one I don't know um, typically the best ones are gold like you can see here um, this is the one that I actually picked up the rune of production and then the second best are these purple ones most of most of the time so this is a rune of leadership four. it gives you both research and building speed 
now when you kill a guardian um that rune will will drop and it will stay there for a certain amount of time so this rune is only going to be here for another two hours eight minutes and 35 seconds um which if you notice uh that means that this rune is going to go away before the new guardians spawn so keep that in mind um you really want to time your rune collection properly uh, because even when the rune disappears your buff will stay so if i were to come over and grab this rune in two hours it'll disappear in eight minutes but i'll still get this buff for the entire duration of uh of this of this um gold production right so it looks like um if this is maybe an eight hour buff uh, i'm not really sure um but yeah so it's important to time your rune collection properly what's important for runes and some of the most important runes that you're going to see are a 15 percent research speed increase 15 percent building speed increase i think there's also a 15 percent troop training speed increase which is really really good um so there's some incredible runes that drop uh at the lost temple again you can also get runes from other holy sites they just tend to be of a lower caliber so when you get the chance i would try to get the runes from the center of the map because they will be the most powerful so with that being said now you know where the runes spawn in where the guardians are how to get the runes and kind of what they can do for you right 15 percent research speed is insanely good um let's talk a little bit about titles right titles are probably the second most common of the buffs that we're going to talk about in this video now you can you can see if you go into the kingdom chat and i will try to pull it up here um so this person here shared their coordinates in it um, this is their city and you can see here that they asked for the Duke title and so if you click on that icon it'll tell you what buffs this city is currently getting let me grab this little uh, little treasure right there um, and the reason that people ask for these titles is because only one person at a time can have any given title so there can't be two Dukes in a single kingdom the only exception to this i believe is in the lost kingdom during kvk i believe every single um kingdom has their own uh, uh they have their own titles right so you could have one duke per kingdom basically um so in kvk since there's multiple kingdoms there's multiple dukes but primarily there's only going to ever be a single duke there's only ever going to be a single of any single one type of title I said single a lot in that sentence you can learn more about these titles by tapping on the lost temple in the center of the map and right next to whoever the king is you can click these gears and this will show you some of the different options that the lost temple has now unless you're king or a high-ranking um royal royalty in the kingdom you're not going to really be able to do anything here um but if you tap on buffs um i'm sorry not buffs if you tap on titles then it'll tell you what all the different titles are and who is currently occupying that title um so if we look here at the very top this is the king of my current uh uh, kingdom right and so the king gets a bunch of buffs they get five percent attack five percent defense and five percent health so king is a really powerful buff to have if you are waging war super super good right super good now the ruler titles are not as powerful but still super good and these are the queen who gets 15 percent gathering speed the general who gets five percent attack and five percent defense so another really powerful um a really powerful war title there and then there's prime minister who gets 15 percent resource uh, resource production and 10% building speed which is really good next we have the defenders and this is kind of the next tier down um, and we have justice Duke architect and scientist justice gives you 5% attack 10% March speed Duke gives you 5% defense 10% training speed which is super good architect gives you a flat 10% building speed and scientist gives you a 5% research speed and a 10% gold gathering speed now the final um, tier of title are the negative titles now these are ones that you never want to have right there's never an instance where you would really want one of these titles and as you can see we are not giving these to anybody so there's traitor beggar exile slave slugger and fool usually in a well-developed kingdom nobody will have these um sometimes you know if your friend becomes like the king they'll give you like the traitor title as like a joke or something like that so if somebody like gives it to you in that way don't get too offended or whatever um they can easily take it away from you and that won't be an issue the main reason that these negative titles exist is because if a player goes what we would call rogue meaning that um they decide to leave their alliance and just start killing people all over the place 
um, and let's say they're a really powerful player, right? Um, what you could do is the king, in order to kind of control them a little bit better, is give them a negative title. So they can immediately lose attack and defense, or um, they can uh, lose training speed and things like that. So that's really why these titles exist. Most of the time, you're not going to need them. You're not going to want them. Um, so we're going to ignore those for now. So now the question is, how do you get these titles, right? How do you become the queen? How do you become the architect, right? Primarily, the way that King gets his title is by being the leader of the alliance that owns the lost temple. So if we zoom out here a little bit right now, it looks like orange is the alliance that owns the lost temple. And so if we zoom in, we can see that orange is KNQ. That's the alliance that owns lost temple. And because, um, scarred is the leader of KNQ, he is by default, the king of the entire kingdom. So once king is in place, the king can then hand out these titles to anybody. What's important about the ruler titles, these three titles is that the only way that you can get one of these titles is from the king. These three titles also have the power to give other players the defender titles, right? So for example, if you want to be scientist, either the king, the queen, the general, or the prime minister can give you the scientist title. If you want to be general, the only person that can give you general is the king. So that's why there's the top tier, which is king. Then there's the ruler tier, which is like second tier. And then there's third tier, which is defender. Defender is the easiest to get because there's four players who can give it to you. Whereas if you want to be one of these three, there's only one person who can give it to you. And that's the king. So obviously if we take a look here, it's, it's pretty self-evident as to when you would want these specific titles. And so you might say, okay, well, if I'm about to build, you know, my academy to 25 and it's going to take X amount of days, you would want the building speed speed up, but you also would want there to be a rune that gives you 15% building speed because these two things add together. Now, um, I am pretty confident that, uh, these buffs add together. They are additive. So if you get a, if you're architect, you get 10% building speed. And if you grab a rune that is 10% building speed, you now effectively have 20% building speed. And so it's not like, you know, you get a 10% building speed rune, which, which bumps up your building speed. And then you get the, the, um, title on top of that, which is another 10% including that rune. It doesn't work that way. It's, it's additive. So these buffs add together, right? So it's not exponential. It's just linear. Um, th I'm, I'm almost positive. That's how it is. But if for some reason, if that changes or if, if that's wrong or something, uh, definitely comment down below, but I'm almost certain that's how these buffs work. They all add together rather than like stack. Really. It's pretty self-evident which title you would want for which thing. So, um, at the, you know, when, when reset happens and you want to train troops, a lot of times you'll see people asking for Duke. So that way they get the 10% training speed. And of course you would want a rune to kind of coincide with that. Now you might say, okay, well, if there's only one architect per kingdom and one Duke per kingdom, you know, uh, how do I hold it for the entire duration of the build, right? Like, let's say it takes 15 days to build something. Um, why would they let me be the architect for 15 days? Well, the, the, the trick is that, um, you don't actually need to hold the title for the entire duration of whatever it is that you're doing. So the buffs only matter at the time of actually initiating a specific sequence. So for example, um, if you go to build a, uh, do an upgrade on a building, right? Um, whatever buff, uh, however much time it takes to do that upgrade is calculated and set in stone. The moment you hit, you hit upgrade. So, um, if you tap on a building and you see, it takes 15 days to, to build that, to upgrade that building, and then you grab a building speed rune, and then you get architect and it lowers fit from 15 days to 13 days. Right. And then you hit build. And then let's say your rune runs out and somebody else gets the title that time is locked in place right so the amount of time that it takes to upgrade a building or to uh, research a specific um uh, research in the academy uh that time is locked in at the moment that you hit upgrade and um, whatever buffs you have in place will last the entirety of that upgrade so you can see why people pass these around because you know you'll get duke and you'll start a troop training. And then, and then once you start that training, um, you can actually go ahead and say, okay, I'm done with Duke because I already started my training. I already got the benefits of that buff. 
there's no benefit of holding on to that that perk any longer um, because once you start it that's it it's locked in you're good to go and again same thing with runes if your rune runs out but you've already started your training or you've already started your building upgrade or research um you, that benefit is locked in for the duration now let me show you really quickly um how you can get a rune really fast this is my favorite way to do it um my favorite way to get runes is to actually you you tap you tap gather right you tap gather and it will you'll you have to send an army to go get it right the fastest way to get runes is with a with a commander that has super fast march speed right and so the way that i do it is that i have my Cao Cao who is maxed um mobility tree and he also has some march speed here he also has some march speed here um i send my Cao Cao with my minamoto who also has a march speed skill and that army is super fast now what i also do is i send a single tier one cavalry unit right tier one cavalry are the fastest units in the game so they're way faster than tier five um the trade-off is that they're super weak so they die fast it doesn't matter how many troops you send to go get the rune you still collect the rune in the same amount of time um so you might as well send the least amount of troops and the fastest troop possible so what it looks like and if you watch players you'll see everybody does this is you send two commanders with high march speed and then you send a single tier one cavalry unit and i actually have um if i tap here i can show you my troops um i actually have 58 tier one um cavalry sitting here just waiting to be used for this specific purpose and that's it um if you don't have Cao Cao or Minamoto what I love to do uh, is I actually have a my Lancelot is he also offers some March speed so I have his talents built as mobility um and then I also um because this is a five percent March speed and then I pair him with Dragon Lancer who also gives uh, a 10 percent March speed I believe here yeah so that's a 15 percent March speed again send them with one single tier one unit now let me also talk about how you can ask for titles appropriately before we talk about kingdom buffs um if you zoom out you can tap on your city and you'll see a little star right here and you can star pretty much any type of uh, structure so i can um uh, i guess you can't do it for barbs because they disappear but you can do it for like a flag you can add a star to a flag or you can add a star to another city if you wanted to but the easiest and most efficient way to ask for a title is to tap on your city tap the star and then in this box what you want to do is say like duke please and then you add a little smiley face because it's cute all right and then you hit confirm and what that's going to do is save a marker at your specific location now if you look in the top uh, at the top of the screen you can view all of your markers right and so if i tap special um because i i start it right this is um the location of my city if i tap go it brings me right to my city no matter where i am if i tap this and i tap special and i hit go it'll bring me right to my city which is useful now um in order for you to receive a title the person giving you that title has to know your, the location of your city so the way that this works is that now that you have your specific location saved with the title that you want you actually can hit this button here and you can share this location with your kingdom chat right and i'm not going to do it because i don't want duke right now but you tap that and you can send that specific special coordinate to your kingdom and that's what you see here so this is what it would look like it's their coordinate duke please so you tap on this and it says okay this is where they're located they are asking for duke and that makes it really really easy for your um for the the royalty in your kingdom to give you your specific title now once you're done with that title it's super important that you tell them because a lot of times what happens again there's only one duke per a lot uh, per kingdom there's only one scientist per kingdom so you know when you have that title you want to be quick with doing your upgrade because other players are going to want that specific uh title so once you're done with that title you just go back into kingdom chat and you just type in say hey i'm done with duke duke thank you and then they know okay now that they're done they can give it to the next player who's waiting in line patiently to use that specific title um so it's really important that you are clear with where you're located and what title you want and once you're finished let them know hey i'm done with it that way they can move on to the next person um because 
the 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 royalty have there's no benefit of being a title giver right um giving out titles doesn't give you experience or like special chests or anything like that um it's people are literally just sitting online um giving out titles for your benefit with literally like nothing in return for that right um and so you want it to be as painless for them as possible you don't want people waiting in line people are wondering are they done with the title like i don't want to take it away from them if they're not done using it but at the same time it's been like x amount of minutes um how long does it take to upgrade you know just tap upgrade on something so super important right so we talked about um where to get runes the fastest way to march over there to get them we also talked about what the titles are and how you can ask for them in the most effortless and efficient way possible um and a little bit of etiquette there talking about how you you know letting them know that you're finished with it let's talk finally about kingdom buffs and this is the most simple but also the rarest of the buffs kingdom buffs aren't rare in that they're hard to get they're just rare in that you can only get like once per day i believe it is and your king has to pay i think two thousand or two thousand five hundred gems um in order to activate a buff so again if you go into the lost temple um you can tap on buff and there are five options here the fifth option is actually really new they just added this into the game but you can see um there is a 10 percent building speed buff for four hours there's a 10 percent research speed buff for four hours there's a 10 percent training speed buff for four hours there's a 20 percent resource production buff for eight hours and then there's also a 30 percent healing speed buff for eight hours so this is super useful i can't wait to see this in kvk but essentially what this is and usually it's up to the king to decide when to activate one of these buffs and they kind of have to see like you know what runes are available right because again this stacks with runes and with titles so if you're doing guardians and they drop a 15 percent research rune well that's substantial right and that will stack on top of the 10 percent industrial revolution um buff kingdom buff as well as the five percent scientist buff um that you can get by getting that title so a lot of times the um the kingdom buff that is activated will be dependent and decided by what runes randomly drop right and so sometimes it's not really worth it to activate a research buff because you know it costs 2000 gems or whatever 2500 gems um and you know you're only gonna get getting a 10 percent research speed buff and if there's not a good rune there then like you know you might as well maximize the benefit if you're gonna spend all those gems right especially if you can only activate one of these per day um super important to know so that's kind of how you get a kingdom buff it's up to your king to decide when to activate it when they want to spend it but usually if you see a really rare really powerful rune drop it's usually most of the time it is the case that the king will then coincide a kingdom buff on top of that so that way players can maximize their benefits um in working towards a specific um uh, research or building or anything like that um so these are super useful hopefully you're in a kingdom that is actively using those buffs because they are really good and with that being said guys this video is way longer than i thought it was going to be but i hope that i went really in depth for all of these different buffs that you can get and the fact that they all uh, add together to give you really really powerful buffs to um, decrease your research speed building speed training speed everything like that um, and you know again if you enjoy this video I would really appreciate you dropping a thumbs up on the video it helps my channel a ton probably more than you than you think um, comment down below if you have any questions about any of these buffs and how they work I would love to go down there and answer them for you guys my twitch is in the link in the description if you see me live but i'm playing a different game feel free to come and still ask me questions about rise of kingdoms because then i can answer them without having to check comments on youtube all the time it's just easier to do that for me um so if you see me live don't be afraid to come over and ask me some questions i'm more than happy uh to answer them for you as long as i can give you a good answer subscribe to the channel if you're new around here we've actually been growing really really fast because of rise of kingdoms so thank you to all the new viewers out there i really 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 appreciate it thank you guys so much it's been incredible um i've been growing faster now than i have in a couple of years so a uh, huge shout out to all of my new viewers this goes without saying but tap that bell to get notified the next time i upload another rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace